Hello and welcome to the devotion for Wednesday, July the 27th. And we're looking at faith, healing, and miracles, what are referred to as the power gifts. Now yesterday we uh, spoke about uh, what it takes to really hear the voice of the Lord and being able to become sensitive to that voice. And uh, we're going to pick up with all of these uh, toward the end. But today I want to look at the second gift, a uh, list of gifts, which was faith, healing, and miracles. Now, these are gifts that, you know, we see things happen that are somewhat uh, unbelievable. We have shows like It Must Be a Miracle or those kind of things. We also know about healing. You go to a doctor, he gives you a pill, you get better. We also know about uh, faith. We see people trusting others and whatnot. But the gifts of faith, healing, and miracles that Jesus talks about is when God Although he generally allows us to walk out uh, the natural course of what is happening in a fallen world, he is also interacting with us along this trail. And to the degree that we allow God's Spirit to inform every area of our life is the degree to which we will see healing and miracles and also experience the ability to walk in faith. Now, I love this definition of faith in Hebrews 11.1. 1. It says, now faith is being sure of what we hoped for and certain of what we do not see. And then it says, this is what the ancients were commended for. In other words, it is being sure of what we are still waiting to see and being certain even though we don't see it. Yeah, the ability to go, I know God is going to provide for me. I know God is going to do this work or, or provide this opportunity or whatever it is. Now, that gift of faith is not something that we just all of a sudden, you know, just materializes. It is something that we grow in even as we grow in the ability to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. And I, one of the reasons that most people never really get to see God do incredible things in their life is because we give up if we get discouraged in one area. We don't realize this is a marathon, not a sprint. Many people will go, well, you know, I asked God about this, or I trusted God in this one thing, and, you know, it didn't go very well, and so, you know, I just, you know, I, or we get like we talked about with the children of Israel, where we're in a situation to where we get out there, we get scared, and it's just so comfortable to run back to the familiar than it is to continue walking and going, I know God is going to provide for this. It is only when we consistently walk in faith in trust, believing that God is going to meet our needs according to his glorious riches, which are in Christ Jesus. Begin believing that God will make all grace abound to those that follow him. That's when we begin to see these things happen. And it is most people, I believe, stop way, way, way too quickly before we get to see what God really will do in and through our life. In James 1.5, James uh, pretty much sums it up. He said, if anyone lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives it generously without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because the one that doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all that he does. And what he means is when we're double-minded, when we, we're going to trust God and then we know, and then we're going to do this and then we do it in our own strength. And then we kind of, you know, lay out there and then, no, no, it's not going to be good. And we begin to manipulate and control. He goes, we shouldn't expect that we're going to see any kind of miracles. That is not faith. That is freaking out and going back and trying to control and manipulate and do uh, a whole bunch of other things. And usually we mess up even the good thing that God would do. Or we see it going the wrong way and we get discouraged. Now, but as we look at the lives of people who really had faith, Abraham. Now, Abraham started off great. He trusted God. He left his homeland and he followed God in the way that God asked him to. But on the way, he got panicked and he gives his wife away to some king. And God causes uh, the, uh, the king to recognize what has happened and he gives his wife back to Abraham. But the very next time that Abraham gets in, in trouble again and thinks, man, this king is going to take my wife and kill me, he gives her away a second time. You know, and, and then 
God promises him a son, but he doesn't trust that God can do it because his wife's getting older and she doesn't look like she's going to have kids. So he works it out to try to have a, a kid with his handmaiden. This guy that we talk about having great faith really missed God on a bunch of situations and it caused chaos in his life and it caused havoc. But what happened was consistently seeing God can provide and provide, even when he was inconsistent in certain areas, eventually he trusted God even with the life of his own son. As we look at David, you know, he goes down in history as being this great man of faith that at a young age, he even believed that God would give him the giant of the Philistines, Goliath, even though every other soldier was petrified with fear. But David says very clearly, he goes, it was forced upon me. A lion attacked my flock and I had to try to defend myself and I saw that God gave me supernatural strength to do this and then a bear attacked and the same thing happened. And he goes, if God can give me a lion and God can give me a bear, certainly he can give me a giant. Again, he didn't start as a giant killer. He started by just responding and trusting God. When we look at that and we go, you know, uh, Joseph goes down as one of my favorite heroes in all of scripture. And the reason is because Joseph continued to trust God even when everything on the outside looked like nothing was being blessed. He gets sold as a slave and yet he still trusts God. And when the master's wife tries to seduce him, he tells the truth and he gets thrown in prison. I mean, it looks like it's going from bad to worse, but even in prison, he trusted God. He followed God. And in that, it said that when he was at Potiphar's house, before Potiphar's wife lied about him, that Everything that he did was blessed, and Potiphar put everything under his charge. When he gets lied about and then thrown in prison, which looks like a worse deal, it says that and even in the prison, that he honored God with everything in his life, and everything that he did in the prison prospered. And the warden eventually puts him in charge of everything in the prison. And then when he interprets the dream of one of the uh, people who was incarcerated, from Pharaoh's palace, and he interprets the dream later when he says, there's this guy in, in jail that can interpret dreams, and he interprets the king's dream. It comes clear. Now, 14 years, 14 years, he is a slave for seven, he's in prison for seven. 14 years later, the plan becomes obvious. God had trained him. He said, he taught him to manage a household, he taught him to manage a prison. A ring was slid on his finger and he managed a country. Saved his family and became second in all of Egypt. Now he would never have known that had he been a double-minded man. Had he trusted God until it got rough or until it got hard or until it looked like things were going the wrong way. And then all of a sudden he goes, well, I trust God. You know, this is crazy. I'm not going to do this. If God doesn't bless me, leave me as a slave. There's no way I'm going to trust God. You know, put me in prison after I've been righteous and after I did the right thing? No way, I'm not going to trust God. Well, he'd been, he'd been a prisoner for the rest of his life. Instead, he began to believe that God has not forgotten me, that I am walking through some very hard places, but I know that God can redeem them. I know that God can move them forward. In my own life, I would love to say that every day has just been full of blessing and there haven't been any heartache. I would love to have not been raised by an alcoholic, abusive father. I would love to have not had to struggle with dyslexia. I would so wish I could go back eight years ago and not have fallen and broken my ankle and, and had to go through all the rehab and all the stuff. But here's what I know. In the middle of all of that stuff, just like Joseph, God has made me stronger, made me wiser, and the blessing in my life has far outweighed any hurt or any hassle or any burden that I've had to walk through. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. Know it. Everybody's going to face it because we have to learn to hate sin the way that God hates it. But he has not forgotten us. He is walking with us. We have to learn to trust and walk and continue to go forward with what God has promised and what he has done. And we will see healing. We will see miracles. Even though my ankle has been a slow work in progress. When I was one day from spine surgery to fuse my C4 and C, uh, my C3 and C4 vertebra, instantly all the pain gone, all the effects, all the paralysis in my hand disappeared in an instant. I woke up completely pain-free, canceled the surgery, no problem since. 
I know God miraculously heals. I also know he does some progressive stuff, but I know in all of it, God is carrying me. But we have to learn to do this. Abraham learned as he walked through his failures, he learned to trust God. David, as it was forced on him with a lion and a bear, trusted and God did miracles. Joseph had to be faithful even though those different areas looked like it was going from bad to worse at certain points, he chose to believe that God was doing something in and through him. And he saw that blessing day to day, even though the outward circumstances didn't completely turn around. And so Romans 10, 17 finally says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. As we continue to allow God's word to inform us, to walk with us, to carry us, in as we see God fulfilling his word, working with us, even in the midst of the hassle and the chaos that the world brings, we become people of faith and we see miracles and we experience healing. In the long run, we walk in the favor of God. Even though in the short run sometimes we experience the things that come from other people's decisions, we experience the hassles that come from being in a fallen world. I've walked this thing for a long time. I've trusted God. I can't say that every day has been wonderful, but I can tell you on the whole of the journey, God has been good. He has been faithful. And I just, it, it just breaks my heart that so many people never walk it out near long enough to ever see what God could really do with their life. They give up too quick. They abandon and run back like the children of Israel wanted to do to Egypt rather than traveling to the promised land that was always waiting for them. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I know that, uh, that trusting you is difficult. Lord, uh, there are hard things in the world and it's so easy to cave in. But Lord, I know your spirit is just brimming in every one of us that have made you the Lord, wanting to uh, empower us to trust, to walk, to have that wisdom, to see healing, to see miracles, to allow that faith to carry us even through the hard places in life. Lord, I ask that you would help us to make a firm commitment that we will not quit. We will not give up. We will not let uh, short-term discouragements keep us from long-term health and blessing. And that, Lord, with the faithfulness of a Joseph, with the learning of David in those attacks, with the uh, uh, learning that Abraham did, even in his failures, that you would still protect him and watch over him, that, Lord, we in the same way will begin to trust you for all things, and that, Lord, in that we will find the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within us to see you do all things. And, Lord, we look for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, guys, you won't see it if you don't walk it out. So stay strong. Let's walk. And I'll see you tomorrow.